Hey guys, welcome to Ringsiders. Jamie here as always, dressed in my work gear. I'm joined by Callum Moneybags McInnes. How are you doing, Callum? I'm great, thank you, Jamie. For all those that don't know, this is because Callum's secretly embezzling the uh, podcast. Thinks we don't know about it. Um, today we have a very special guest. We're really excited for this one. He's the head trainer at Black and Brave Academy. Marek Brave, thank you for joining us. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Excited to be on. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. How was your day today so far? Like you said, it was 11 a.m.? Yeah, it's it's early still. Uh, you know, got up, got the kids ready, got them cleaned up and fed and, and whatnot. Now trying to keep them entertained upstairs. So if you see a, a little four-year-old running in the background asking for <laughs> some applesauce or something, my bad. It's just part of being a dad. <laughs> What's your day-to-day been like since uh, lockdown and quarantine's been in place? Uh, I spend most of my day trying to stay sane. Um, uh, You know, obviously the gym is shut down right now. Uh, Normally, we take the entire month of April off anyways. Uh, We're on a three-month-on, one-month-off schedule. So we have April off. So that wasn't too different. Uh, But I also run a local independent wrestling company. So we've had to cancel all of our shows. Um, We had five shows scheduled for the month of May. And they all had to be canceled, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. And oh, there's just a lot of different restrictions and guidelines and stuff going on right now that would make it impossible to have an event anyway. So though, those have been shut down. So really, I've just been focusing on uh, being a dad, taking care of my kids, uh, again, trying to stay sane. Uh, the weather's been been clearing up out here and getting a little bit warmer. So I've been able to go on different hikes and stuff through through the woods and, and along creeks and all different uh, areas. Uh, Doing which things is you wouldn't nice usually get to do. So, uh, so that's nice. I'm happy that, you know, the timing of this was the way it was. Otherwise, I'd be stuck inside all winter long, not doing anything. But Yeah, that is that is a good point. If this was in the winter, I think it would hit us a lot worse than it has. Yeah, uh, really like, hoping, uh, hoping it clears up by the winter time. Yeah, good point. So fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, so you've been absolutely. keeping yourself busy at least because it sounds oh, like it'd, yeah. be, it'd be quite a, a hectic schedule you've got anyway. Because I believe you run the training school. Is it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, we train Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights. I run uh, independent wrestling events on Fridays and Saturdays most weeks. Um, and then I also handle all of the social media. For Black and Brave and my independent company, I, I answer all the emails. So every time an email comes through, I'm the one that checks it and responds. Um, so I stay pretty busy. I'm still doing, obviously, doing those things. And we're still accepting applications for our classes that that uh, begin in 2021. We're, we're full through the end of the year. And actually, our January 2021 class just filled up as well. So we've got a handful of spots in May and a handful of spots in September of 2021. And then We'll be full for that year as well. So, I, I think it's great what you're doing at the Black and Brave. It, from everything I've seen from the the videos that you put out, the the people we've spoken to who have actually come through the Black and Brave, we spoke to Zicky Dice recently. And yeah. He had nothing but good things to say about the Black and Brave Academy. And we've actually yeah, got a couple of interviews lined up with a, a few graduates from the Black and Brave. And it's because oh. I, I am genuinely interested in like the the dynamic the training school has because I think you do things a little bit differently to other training schools and I think the the resources the trainees have access to um are are different to other training schools so it's it's good to we try to do things a little bit differently you know we trained uh from October of, of 2004 through December of 2004 so short amount of of training but we had been doing camps with various people uh, since 2002, um, and we, I feel like we kind of broke in right at the the tail end of this like old school wrestling mentality, which mm. you know had its negatives for sure, and 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 uh, kind of a gatekeeping mentality and whatnot that's been broken down. But I think there's a lot of positive positives to that mentality as well. And just wrestling's a tough business, and you're going to go through a lot of adversity and face a lot of adversity. Uh, when you first start out and, and even for many years uh, after you're done training and for 95% of the people, you're not going to make it to the big dance, so to speak. You're not going to make it to WWE and be this massive superstar. So I feel like 
you know, we it would be a disservice to potential applicants or or to uh, current students if we just promise them the world and say all your dreams are are, are obviously going to come true. Sure. Because that's not a given. Uh, you got to put the work in. So we make sure our students work hard. Uh, we bust their asses every single day they they come through the the doors, and we make sure that they're earning uh, every opportunity that they get. So. Uh, okay. We're, you know, we've been at school for five and a half years now, and and enough of our graduates have enough of that experience under their belt that they're starting to do some really good things in the business. And we're just excited to see where they can take it from here because we got some really talented graduates, like you said, Zicky Dice, uh, uh, Steve Manders is doing really well for himself over here in the states, uh, as well as a, a a number of other graduates as well. So we're really excited to see where where they can take their careers going forward, but. Uh, yeah, like you said, we we try to we try to be realistic with the students, and we try to make sure that they're they're getting a, a an accurate uh, description of the wrestling business, and, and and we like to reflect that in the way that we train them. I think I saw in one of your videos you said you're not offering them any shortcuts. It's not a shortcut mm -hmm. that they're going to get. The only mm -hmm. shortcut they're getting is the fact that the the equipment and the training is so good like that's that's it yeah. everything else is dedication hard work and commitment to it and even down to it was in a video that i saw on youtube you everybody sets up the ring which i think is a very important thing in wrestling because when you help set up the ring you appreciate mm -hmm. the, the ring more if that makes any sense you if when you yeah. put together everything you appreciate the the show as a whole and the training like it's a it's a good mentality to have, I think, getting them to actually set up the the ring and have that old school mentality about it. Yeah, they put in a lot of work and and uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. It's not like you said, there's no shortcuts. There's no fast track to success. You you get out what you put in. Um, you know, my business partner, Seth Rollins, Colby Lopez, he's a he's a testament to that. You know, he made it to WWE seven years into his career and that's actually really quick uh especially back then for somebody uh coming up through the independent ranks and and honestly there weren't too many guys that were coming through the independent ranks that were getting signed when he did uh you know you had punk and you had brian and you had cesaro and that you know uh matt Seidel as well and outside of that there weren't too many people from the independents oh. who were getting signed uh so you know seven years in he gets signed that's quick so anyone coming to our school expecting to finish the 12 week course and then and then get an offer to join NXT the next week that you know that's a little delusional. You got to put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifices in to even sniff that opportunity. And then when you get the opportunity, it's 100% on you, you know. Rollins isn't going to go to Triple H and be like, "Make sure you sign my guys uh, once they get done with the tryout or whatever." So and unfortunately, man, we had a group of guys about Four or five guys who had a tryout scheduled um, in early March, early to mid-March, and that was right when all of this hit, and that's right when they canceled all the live events, and they had to move a SmackDown live event to the Performance Center. It was the first live event done at the Performance mm -hmm. Center under no fans, and that was the exact weekend that our students had their tryout. So unfortunately, they flew in on a Thursday night, or a Thursday afternoon, they were able to to go to the facility, get their physicals done, and I believe cut a few promos. And then, unfortunately, they were sent home, and, and the the tryout was rescheduled to a later date. I think we're looking at September now. Uh, wow. And, of course, that can change as well. But hopefully, when that does happen, and, and those guys are able to go there and, and uh, showcase what they got, hopefully we'll have some uh, good results from that. But again, like you said, nothing's promised, nothing is uh, guaranteed. Uh, and that's the way it should be. I think it's interesting uh, that you mentioned about like a, about seven years ago, it used to be quite a big deal when an independent name was signed by WWE. Everybody had their eyes on like, uh, like I said, Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, but it was always a big deal when WWE would sign these indie guys. And I think that's changed a lot now. Like the majority of NXT is these indie guys. And <laughs> how, what do you think's caused that change? Uh, I think, uh, honestly, 
there's just a realization that the independence wasn't like this bastard stepchild of, of WWE. You know what I mean? Like, I think, uh, I think they kind of forgot that that's how wrestling was, you know, 30, 35, 40 years ago is you had your smaller territory territories and the guys and the girls, they would go and they would work there and they'd get over and they'd learn the craft really. And they'd, they'd perfect the craft. And, and mm-hmm. once it's just like minor leagues in baseball or, or college football compared to the NFL or whatever soccer is. I don't know. (laughs) um, uh, No, I don't know what soccer is as well, do you? So it's all right. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) You, uh, you know, you, you, you sharpen your skills at a lower level so that by the time you get called up to the big league, so to speak, you're ready to go. And, and, uh, you know, you learn how to get over, in the independence in front of a hundred people uh you're going to be able to get over in front of uh, a crowd of 10,000 people or, or 15 20,000 people you know what i mean because uh, in my opinion it's harder to to make a connection with the guy who brought his kids and is sitting with his arms folded and is like okay impress me you know this i didn't want to come to this my kids wanted to come to this and then you do something and the guy pops and he's like, hey, this is really cool. And then they come back week after week, month after month. Uh, to me, that's a, a harder experience because you're in control of that. That's all you. Yeah. You don't have a Vince McMahon coming up with uh, an idea for you, for your character or a cool entrance song or awesome pyro or whatever it may be to package you as this uh, first rate, amazing entertainer. That's completely up to you. So if you can bring that to the table and then have a billion dollar corporation throw money at it to, to try and, and work some magic there, that's a perfect combination. That's a, that's a perfect storm, so to speak, uh, for success. So I think once they realize that and they realize that the independents weren't a lesser than product, they just didn't have the money that, that Vince had, obviously, and Vince still does have. Uh, I think when they realize that and they realize that there's a lot of people with some really good talent out there. And then, you know, there was the shift from needing to be six foot five, 300 pounds uh, to be a star. Once that, once that hit uh, and, you know, the internet and and Twitter and Instagram and all that gives buzz to certain individuals uh, and they're trying to sell network subscriptions to everyone, you know, not just the diehard WWE fans who have purchased every pay-per-view for the past two decades, you know, they want to get everybody. So it's not a bad marketing strategy, but also it's not bad for the product. And I think the in-ring product, as far as the matches and whatnot are, you know, better than they've been in almost all of wrestling history. Uh, I I, I totally agree. I've been watching wrestling for about 30 years and the, the in-ring product now is by far the best I've ever seen. The guys and the girls that they've got at the moment, it's an absolute pleasure to watch. And again, we, I know you were saying a minute ago about the connection as well with the Indies and stuff. I, I, I did hear somebody else say that before, and I can't remember who it was that. He said, I got my experience from the Indies, and my goal was to connect with that one person in the audience that I could tell didn't want to be there. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, absolutely, yeah. But yeah, I couldn't agree more that the talent at the moment is incredible. You know, I get goosebumps watching. watching. Like, I watched Money in the Bank last night, and mm-hmm. I was so entertained uh, with what they did, the, the matches. And I'm going to ask you, actually, what you think of, of social media? Because I, I went on Twitter and there was, there was people complaining. Oh, it was, it was this, it was that. I mean, what, what's your thought with social media and, and the effect it's having on the business? I, I, I get annoyed by a lot of the social media uh, commentary. Everyone feels like they're an expert. And, um, you know, I get it. I watch my sporting events and I second guess the coach. You know, you should have made this call and you should have done this and you should have done that. But at the end of the day... I'm not there putting in the work day in and day out, learning the formations and the defensive schemes and and how this guy runs a route compared to another guy. Just there's just so many nuances and intricacies uh, mm. to become a true expert in a certain field. And you know the old saying is you don't know what you don't know. So you can criticize uh, a guy or a girl for going out there and and having a match the way they did or a uh, finish the way it went down or or this, that, and the other, but you don't know who was telling them to do it that way. You don't know uh, what's happening next week or the week after or the week after that. 
And yeah. honestly, you just you don't know what goes into being a performer, being a professional wrestler uh, on that stage. And uh, to criticize is is just you giving an uninformed opinion. You know, it's and people need to understand it is just an opinion. It's not yeah. fact. So I'll I'll get like uh, people are like, okay, what were your three favorite matches in the year 2019 or whatever. And then I'll just, I'll list my personal favorite matches, one, two, three. And then there's comments all day long. Nope, wrong. That match sucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're an idiot. Yada, yada, yada. And it's like, hey, I was asked my opinion. So it's an opinion. It can't be wrong. It's just mine. Yeah. Uh, and, and B, I've been a professional wrestler for almost 17 years. And I have a, a little more knowledge on uh, the business as a whole. And maybe the way I watch wrestling is different from the way the average fan watches wrestling. Uh, and obviously our answers are going to be different, but that doesn't mean that they're wrong. So yeah. I try not to frame, I try not to frame my opinions as fact on Twitter. I try not to say this was awful and this was great. I try to say, in my opinion, I liked this or or I would have yeah. done this differently or whatnot. And I think if more people took a step back and realized that, you know, it's it's not, you know, like expressing your opinion isn't isn't that important. And it's a relatively new thing. Like you didn't get to do this back in the day unless you were on yeah. like the message boards awesome. and whatnot. But uh, and you don't have to do it. That's what we tell our students because uh, we do coach on social media. And, and uh, I, I, some people are going to laugh at that based on uh, how some social media posts from my business partner have gone in the past. <laughs> but uh, hey, man, we all get fed up from time to time. But uh, oh, yeah. we coach on social media and we say, hey, do you really need to put that opinion out there? Do you really need to tweet that? And so what happens if you say, you know, for example, oh, this Brock Lesnar match was terrible. And then in five years, you get signed to WWE and then you see Brock Lesnar in the locker room and somehow he he knows and he confronts you. Like, do you want to deal with that? You probably don't. So is it worth the 24 likes you're going to get for bashing this match or this performer? It's not. And it really yeah. just, and myself as a promoter, if I go to a, a worker's page and I see stuff like that, then I, I immediately am like, oh, you're kind of unprofessional. That's not something that you should be doing. Bro. So it reflects poorly on, on you as an individual. Uh, and as far as fans go, I think you need to understand that you're reading one page of one chapter of one book in a series of books that is never ending. You know what I mean? And you're going to judge the entire series based on one page or one paragraph or one sentence of that book. It's mm. just it's asinine to do that, in my opinion. Like you said, it is a fairly new thing. That isn't something that happened 20 years ago, even, or even 15 years ago. This whole social media boom is only really in the last 10 years. So I think yeah. it is a valuable like thing to be teaching as a wrestling education, how to deal with social media, how to deal with the fans who are going to tell you every match that you had was bad or, yeah. you know, just dealing with that in general. Because I don't know personally, if, if I was a wrestler, I don't know if I'd be able to take the criticism. That's just me. But I there's a lot of it. That I would say yeah. there's more more negativity on social media than there is positivity. And that like uh, spreads quicker than positivity on social media. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. And and uh I don't know where we as a society became so cynical and felt like we needed to tell everyone that they were failing at every aspect of their life, but it's really, uh, uh, I think it's a poor way to live. And uh, for me personally, I stay away from that for the most part. And, you know, I'll read the comments and whatnot. Sometimes I don't just because I'm really not to it that day, but I'll read the comments. If somebody pisses me off and I'm getting ready to, you know, type something back and, and snipe at them. Sometimes I just take a step back and I realize it's really not worth it. It's not going to lead to anything positive for anybody. So what's the point? Not all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll put somebody in their place and uh, <laughs> it can go one of two ways. But uh, for the most part, try to stay away from the negativity because it's always going to be there. Yeah, I found myself doing that last night, actually, as I was – somebody put – I can't remember the comment. It was – I think it was to do with the not the, the typical one at the minute is what do you watch NXT or AEW? And I'm 
It, and there's people oh. having a go at this person for, for watching both. And I'm like, well, you're a wrestling fan. You're allowed to watch whatever wrestling you want. And I, I was typing a, like a real arsehole reply out and I, I <laughs> took a deep breath, deleted it and just put my phone down. But another thing that pisses me off is that you can't watch all the wrestling you want. Yeah. The thing I've learned when, when you do those replies is you're not going to change anyone's mind anyway. It's not like exactly. somebody's going to criticize your opinion or whatever, and then you take the time to lay out your opinion and give points A, B, and C and explain why you feel like you know, you're in the right and maybe they should see it from your point of view. And then the next comment you get back is, F you, you're an idiot. And I was like, exactly. why you take the time to mess with it? If you're not changing anybody's mind. No. Uh, so ignore it. no. Go have a cookie yeah. or something. I don't know it's better. <laughs> you were saying about how the social media has changed wrestling as a whole. Uh, but one question I was interested in is how has independent wrestling changed in the time that you've since you started wrestling to now? It's easy it's to see the changes in WWE, but what's it like as an independent? Yeah, it's a lot different. Uh, like I said, some of it's for the good, you know. Um, there was a lot of, like I said, gatekeeping, and there were veterans, quote unquote, veterans who mm. were not accepting of the younger younger guys coming through. When when Seth and I first broke into the business, we got a lot of heat. Um, we trained for essentially two months, and again, we did many camps and stuff before that. So we had been wrestling for a year and a half before we had graduated um, our professional wrestling school, which is the Danny Daniels Wrestling Academy. Uh, Danny Daniels runs AAW in Chicago. Um, he he gets a, a bad rap on the internet sometimes too, but he's he's a great human being, and and uh, we were happy to be trained by him. He definitely showed us the right way. But you know, we finish our training, and then we immediately get booked uh, in IWA Mid South. And at the time, 2004, 2005, IWA Mid South was the independent to be at in mm -hmm. the entire country. You know, of the United States. And we were on shows immediately with CM Punk and Colt Cabana and Jimmy Jacobs and Matt Seidel and Delirious and Eddie Kingston and, and Spider Nate Webb and, and Chris Crow and just the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And, uh, you know, uh, not all of them, but some of the guys looked at us and they were like, do these guys really deserve to be here or mm -hmm. are they only here because they were trained by Danny Daniels? And at the time, Danny was in, in really good with Ian in IWM itself. And so for a handful of months there, we were quote unquote hazed and, and uh, you know, people would say certain things or do certain things and nothing too egregious or anything like that. And we took it in stride because we, you know, we're, we played sports and stuff growing up and we're kind of used to that. I hate to use the term locker room mentality, but mm. uh, it happens. And uh, we dealt with it. Uh, we turned the other cheek and, and smiled and laughed about it. And then we went out there and we had kick-ass wrestling matches with each other, with the people who were hazing us as a tag team. No matter what we did, we, we knocked it out the park. And so shortly after that, people were like, all right, these guys belong. Mm -hmm. And it's eased up. And, you know, we're still friends with a lot of these guys who are hazing us today. Uh, so I think one of the major differences is that due to social media and stuff, everybody... Uh, I don't know. Everybody has such thin skin and they don't understand that, you know, throughout history, this was a business that was really rough and really and really hard on people. And, you know, without without going you know, without crossing that line, there is uh, there is a line that you can tell where you test people. And you see, hey, where are you at? Where are you at uh, mentally and physically? And can you handle the rigors of of the professional wrestling business and i feel like you know when we first broke in and prior to that the line was a little bit further than it is now and now you get people and especially at, at our school you get people that you know are breaking down and crying in the first 30 minutes of a workout because they've never worked that hard in their life mm. and it's i don't know what you expected when you signed up or i don't know what you expected when you realized you were going to be joining the professional wrestling business because it's tough, it's hard, and it's going to challenge you. And, you know, if we're not hard on you at training, we're not preparing you for this life that you're, you're, you say you want to be a part of. Absolutely. And 
and that's and again, I don't want this to come across as me saying you got to beat the crap out of people and stretch them and and uh, shoot on them and and whatnot because that's not it. Uh, but I do think that uh, you know there's too many people out there trying to appease the social media audience and uh, and it it's not necessarily creating the best product that we could put out there based on uh, you know the type of the type of I'm trying to put this delicately but the type <laughs> of performer that that gets uh, out there, and says this is right, this is wrong, and then basically just craps on everything that made professional wrestling professional wrestling. And it's yeah. And I find myself turning into that that old guy that we would look at when we were breaking in, like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, old man. Times are changing and things are evolving. <laughs> and then you get to be that old man, and I'm again turning 34 next month, so not even all oh, that old. I'm sure I have a baby. I hit my baby, yeah. baby. but uh, you know, I look back and I realize, you know, those old guys. Maybe we should have listened to them a little bit more, mm. and maybe I broke my neck when I was 21 years old, uh, doing dumb stuff I didn't need to be doing. You know, and maybe, maybe uh, they're a little bit smarter than you think they are. So hopefully, you know, people are are listening to us old guys, but I'm sure it's much of the same. Like, oh, you guys just don't know what business is related to, you know. But that's how every generation it's, gets Absolutely, yeah. It's just a new era of the old guys now. Like, yeah. It sounded like uh, that was a great, I don't know if you meant to do that, but that was a very good almost Harley race kind of impression. <laughs> that Harley once, and he had already been in a wheelchair, but that was... Uh, Man, that was bucket list stuff right there. He's oh, a great dude. Sure. Yeah, I think Callum, uh, Callum would say Harley Race is like Mount Rushmore number one for me. He's up there with Ric Flair. I just, oh, I, I, love my old, I love my old school territory kind of wrestling. And uh, yeah, Harley Race is, is a god as far as I'm concerned. Can um, you imagine Harley Race commenting on people's tweets <laughs> <laughs> about his matches? <laughs> I would pay good money to see that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, we, maybe we all need to be a little bit more Harley. Yeah, I think that's the advice we can take from this is be a bit more like Harley Race on social media. <laughs> uh, just, just to go back as well, America, obviously just, you might have seen Callum's face light up when you mentioned uh, IWA Mid-South. It's one of his favourite ever promotions. So Seriously, I think- I- as a British fan, we, we had very little wrestling over here, maybe 15 years ago. So I used the internet to find what wrestling I could. And in the early YouTube, I found IWA Mid-South. Um, this was going back about 15 years ago now. Um, and I remember seeing you teaming with Tyler Black, but you both had, well, you especially had much longer hair. And, I did. Um, I believe it, the first match I saw of yours was against Josh Abercrombie. Um, yeah. yeah, and it, the the stuff you guys were doing blew my mind because I'd never seen anything really like it before. I'd only seen WWE, WCW, and my first taste of the independence was IWA Mid-South and Chikara. And yeah. it really opened my eyes to like this whole new world of wrestling. And from there, I feel like my, my love of the independence grew to like Ring of Honor. And eventually, I didn't watch as much WWE. It was all about the US Indies. And still to this day, I'm a big fan of US Indies. And like that's why I was saying, like, it, how do you feel it's changed being an independent wrestler from back then when I watched you to, to now? And it sounds like it, it has changed quite a bit, but mostly for the better. Oh, yeah, for sure. There, you know, there's little things you can nitpick at. But uh, being an independent wrestler now, and a lot of the students when they graduate, I'm like, man, you don't know what it was like breaking in you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago, you'd wrestle in, regularly wrestle in front of 20, 30, 40 people. Uh, and now, even at your smallest independent shows, you can usually pack in 80 to 100, which isn't the best draw in the world, but it's enough to make sure everyone gets paid decently yeah. uh, and, and to make sure you're having a good time. And that's, you know, it's more fun when you wrestle in front of more people and the crowd 
feeds off each other. They make more noise and have better reactions and whatnot. So uh, independent wrestling isn't looked at as a joke as much as it used to be. You know, you get people that they get their friends together and they go out and they enjoy it and they have a couple beers and, and it's a fun time, uh, which is nice. That's great. I love it. Um, I do have a bit of a nostalgia for the old days, though, because you knew if you were an independent wrestling fan or an independent wrestler or an aspiring independent wrestler, you really must love professional wrestling mm -hmm. as a business because it wasn't easy and it wasn't, and you got a lot of laughs from people. You know, I remember when you would tell someone you're a professional wrestler and they'd immediately be like, oh, that fake stuff or, oh, like yeah. MMA, you know, when are you, when's your next fight or whatever? And it's, like, oh, yeah. it's not quite like that, you know? Uh, and nowadays you tell people and they're like, oh, that's really cool. So uh, it's definitely changed a lot. Uh, in some ways, I wish we could keep some of that old school mentality, but uh, as far as just getting the respect and the exposure and, and the amount of wrestling you can consume, like you said, you only got to see a, a couple promotions from the United mm -hmm. States 15 years ago. Nowadays, you can jump on IWTV and right at the click of, of a button, you got 150, 200 promotions. You can watch yeah. all of their events. And that's wild to me. I remember discovering independent wrestling through uh, a torrent site, Kazaa, or, or yes. however they pronounce it, Kazaa or whatever. And my first introduction to independent wrestling was <clears throat> a 10 second Amazing Red versus Low Key match that happened on the East Coast in like 2002. And uh, it looked like, like a kung fu movie, you know, like duck mm. this, catch this, and spin out of this. And we, me and my friends in high school, we were like, wow, this is amazing. This, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. So we searched and found. Uh, an independent promotion in Chicago, which is about two and a half hours away from us. And we're like, all right, we're going to go check this out. And like looking back now, it was probably some of the worst professional wrestling I've ever seen. But at the time, I thought it was amazing. And the main event was a, like a triple threat TLC match. And one of the guys did a swanton bomb off the top of a ladder from inside the ring to the outside, threw a table and got all busted up. And he bled on the floor, and I remember taking my ticket stub, which is pretty rare for an independent show. You don't get actual physical tickets very yeah. often. But I took my ticket stub, and I dipped it in the guy's blood, and I kept it. And I still have it today, and I don't know who the guy was or, or anything like that. But I, well, you can't be an interest and find out. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted, There was a guy in Chicago, and it might be him, that used to do uh, – he based his character off of uh, – Creed, the band, Creed. Well, <laughs> he came out to, right. Oh, his name, was, his name was Sacrifice. He came out to my sacrifice, and he <laughs> had long brown hair like Scott Stapp from Creed, and he came out to my sacrifice. His name was Sacrifice. I'm almost positive I have that guy's blood on a ticket stub somewhere packed away in a box in my home. Every, but, uh, every independent wrestler about 15 years ago had a – a, like a compilation on YouTube of my sacrifices, the, the yep. song to it. Everybody. Yep. And that guy took it a step further, made it his whole gimmick. <laughs> Great. That's, that's oh, pro that. wrestling, baby. That's pro wrestling. That's fantastic. It, it, independent <laughs> wrestling, though, is just the coolest thing. Like, like I said, when I saw it, and you, you thought it was like a, a kung fu movie. To me, I, I thought very similar. It was like, I had never seen any of this stuff before. They were doing flips and dives and no regard for the body or anything. And as being 15 years old, it was just like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen. And I still think independent wrestling is the coolest thing. It's, but now it's changed to the point where even if you are an independent, chances are you're still having to work towards a camera because most companies now have some kind of streaming network. And do you feel like for the first time ever really, if you're an independent, you're having to work as like a, a TV worker as well, because it's chances are it's going onto a network as well. Yeah, and hopefully a lot of these promotions are are uh, making a point to to remind the wrestlers of that and say, hey, we're putting this on IWTV. Uh, this is the hard cam. Make sure you're working towards that. Uh, hopefully they're letting people know that. Um, but yeah, it, I think independent wrestling is is more similar to, you know, the big leagues, quote unquote, the big leagues, than it ever has been. Like you mm. said, you got streaming services, whatnot. 
you got these big elaborate entrances at some places and, and it's a lot of fun. And I think the fans are benefiting, the workers are benefiting and everyone's kind of benefiting. And uh, I've always said you need more intelligent people in the independent wrestling community. You know, whatever your talents are, whether you want to be a referee or a commentator or somebody taking the tickets at the door or an in-ring performer, uh, if you're intelligent, we got a spot for you. We'll figure it out. Um, and it, it feels like right now there's more intelligent people participating in the sport of professional wrestling on an independent level than ever before. And that's great for the business. That's going to lead to nothing but good things. So hopefully we can continue on that trend and, and uh, everybody in independent wrestling community will be able to do this for as long as they want. Fingers we crossed. got to get back to having shows, though. <laughs> um, moving away slightly from wrestling, but going into another form of entertainment as well, you've got into acting recently. Yes. And you're in a short film coming up called The Things We Tell The Ones We Love. Yes. And what I'll do now is I'll play the trailer and then we'll discuss a little bit more about the film. So I'll play that now. What some people are calling the first designer virus has infected a few dozen people in predominantly tier three states. Asshole, get the hell out of my car! I gotta get back to my reality! Neighborhood's gone to hell. You're that afraid of me? Yeah. Oh, you might be this normal is not right me. now, but you know you fall. But you know that this isn't me. That's what that virus does to you. We need to get this over with. I could solve this problem for 18 cents. It's his wife. How long do you think this is going to go on before she kills him? Or worse? Billy, let me in! Billy, 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 Billy! Daddy's got you. No one's going to hurt you. Daddy's got you. Billy, you guys. I slid above you wants my blood so she can feel a flash and a flood. My little Bobby can fly like me over the moon and the evil tree. What the fuck are you talking about? My blood, you see, can set you free. And it'll be just you, and it'll be just me. <sighs> cool, so... You've just seen the trailer for The Things We Tell, The Ones We Love. Marit, could you tell us a little bit more about how you got into this? Uh, did they reach out to you? Did you have an interest in acting? Uh, you know, this is actually not the first film I acted in. I was in a movie uh, called Diary of a Superhero uh, years ago, probably 12, 13 years ago. And, and when Netflix was just a DVD service, uh, not a streaming service, my, my film I was in was on Netflix. You could rent the DVD and they'd mail it to your house. You could mm -hmm. watch it and send it back whenever you were done with it. So that, that's kind of fun. But uh, uh, so I have always kind of had an interest in acting and, and wrestling and acting kind of goes hand in hand. And, and uh, the, the best part of wrestling has always been the characters, the character work for yeah. me. So it's just kind of a natural progression. And living in Iowa, you don't get a lot of opportunities to participate in movies or films um but this time i did the director matt wilkins uh he's originally from davenport iowa but he's lived uh in seattle washington for the past 20 or 30 years and and he directs a lot of tv shows he does episodes of hoarders and uh, alaskan bush people and different reality shows and whatnot but then you know for fun he makes a lot of independent films uh mm -hmm. and he decided to come back to davenport for this one and uh Part of the script uh, uh, incorporates a uh, aspiring MMA fighter. And so they were looking for someone to choreograph the fight scenes. And they were also looking for uh, 
basically a ring and 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 i know how to choreograph fight scenes i've been doing it for 17 years and i happen to own a couple of professional wrestling rings and, and put on independent shows out in the community so uh he reached out to me and asked if i'd have an interest in in being a part of the film and then was looking for uh he said a bigger guy and i'm six foot two you know 215 pounds and the main actor is like five nine buck 75 so in my mind i'm like well I'm not the biggest guy out there, but I'm definitely a lot bigger than this dude. So uh, we can use our movie magic to make me look even even bigger than I am. So, uh, so yeah, he sent me an email, asked if I'd be interested, um, and, and we did it. We shot it. Uh, my my scene took uh, a day to film, and then I had some a couple uh, a couple other uh, fight scenes to choreograph, and that took another day. Um, and they spent about 10 days here in the Quad Cities getting everything right in the middle of winter. It was February of 2019, some of the coldest days we've ever had out here. Um, so I'm sure he was regretting that after uh, a few hours. But, yeah, they contacted me and asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And I had no idea what to expect going into it. I didn't, I didn't even really know just the kind of level of professionalism that these guys had. Um, but after watching the finished product, I was – so surprised at how awesome it turned out and really excited about uh, how professional it was. And the cinematography is great. The acting's great. It they does flew, look really good. Yeah. They flew in all these actors from New York and, and LA and, and Seattle to come in and be a part of the film. And there's a lot of awesome shots of Davenport, Iowa. They used a drone to get a bunch of the different shots of the multiple bridges and the Mississippi river all frozen over in the middle of the winter. And, uh it, it was really fun i've done a few screenings now and i've seen the the full film about three or four times and each time there's little things that i noticed that i hadn't noticed uh prior and uh it was just it was just great to be a part of and, and hopefully you never know hopefully i'll be able to partake in in different productions going forward but we're trying to get we're trying to get the word out there uh, the original plan was to to shop this film around to different film festivals, take it to different film festivals and let audiences watch it. It's an interactive sci-fi film. So if you watched Bandersnatch on Netflix, yeah. same concept, you get to choose what the character does. Do they run or do they fight? Do they, do they talk it out or do they start shooting? You know, uh, that's up to you. That's you as the viewer. You get to make the choice. And based on what you choose, the story goes in, in a multitude of different directions. So. Uh, that's an awesome thing. I was a big fan of choose your own adventure books growing up. Yeah. Uh, but then it's also interesting because life kind of imitates art. And the movie is about a virus that's infecting a certain uh, percentage of the population. And uh, mm -hmm. this virus, uh, it, it lowers or takes away completely the inhibitions and the fear of the person it infects. And so that's where my character comes in and apparently my character is just a bad dude because uh, the first thing he does when his inhibitions are taken away is he he goes on a murderous rampage so uh i play this evil clown slash bunny type character uh and I, i'm i'm trying to murder man i'm trying to I kill that's a really interesting concept though like for a film what what do people who class themselves as morally good do when you take away the, the inhibitions and you say oh you can do this you can do that what's the first thing they're going to do are they still going to be good people or are we going to see like a darker side to that person are we going to see who they really are and yeah, it sounds like the, your character's a, a bit of a dick <laughs> yeah the whole concept of the film it's it's about a family uh where the mother was infected with the virus but the father and uh and the grandma and the sister they were not, and they have a newborn baby. And so the mom still wants to see the baby, but what kind of deep uh, things does she have going on in the dark recesses of her brain mm -hmm. uh, come to the forefront when infected with this virus? So this family is kind of torn apart because on one hand, the husband wants to be with his wife and uh, the wife and, and the mother wants to be with her child. But is that safe? Can they do that and find ways to work it out? Or does it kind of blow up in everyone's face? And that's what you find out when you watch the movie. So if we're, like, I'm sure there's uh, plenty of people listening who will be wanting to see the full thing. When can we see the full film? Is it available now? Yep, it's actually available right now. Um, and hopefully in the comment section, or maybe you can embed something in the video, we'll yep. get a link for everyone to see it. There's a couple different links. 
Um, um, you can go to my Instagram right now. Uh, this morning I put in my bio a link to the film. So my Instagram at mbrave13. Um, click the link in my bio. You'll be able to watch the full film. Depending on what uh, choices you make, it's a, about an hour long. So it's not going to take too much of your, of your time. But you can watch through it multiple times and pick different things and see how the story changes uh, based on the decisions you make. I really think it is the future of uh, movies doing interactive, like different endings for different movies is the future of storytelling because it doesn't have to be so linear. You can have different endings based on what you choose. And every time you watch the film, you make different choices. You're watching a different film. And I think that's just such an exciting concept and can be applied to so many different things, so many different types of entertainment as well. Like, I'd love to see it somehow done in wrestling or something. That yeah. would be so cool. And especially now with all the cinematic matches that have been taking place. Yeah. Um, which is, I guess, a silver lining in all of this, because a lot of those have been really fun. And uh, it would be interesting if maybe they could upload some sort of uh, choose as you go match an interactive match on the network or, or or through an independent streaming service and have different outcomes yeah. and you know what it might take man now i'm kind of brainstorming with it it doesn't <laughs> even have to be like it doesn't even have to be super like uh you know like uh oh what was the the boneyard match excuse me where yeah. just that type of le level of cinematics like do you climb to the roof you, it could just be a wrestling match in general do you go mm. for a double leg takedown. Do you do you try to hook a suplex? What do you do? And and uh, depending on where you're at in the match and how much damage you've inflicted, maybe you're successful or you're not. I don't know. It, it could be you could really get that intricate with it. It would be interesting. I would love to see something like that as choose your own story wrestling adventure. Like you said, it could be a normal match or it could be something like the Burnyard match where you know there's an ending where AJ Styles. Buried the Undertaker or something. Mm -hmm. That would just be interesting to see. Well, um, we better trademark this because that sounds like a million dollar idea. <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, I think we're onto something here. I, th I think we're onto something. Yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah that, it sounds awesome though. I mean, uh, the whole like starring in this film as well and being part of something that is relatively new. This whole choose your own adventure thing. Is it something you want to do more of? Then, like you wanted to do. Obviously, you, you're wrestling. You've got quite a busy schedule. Are you wanting to find more time to do acting as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it's a little bit more difficult from Iowa, and I have a lot of things tying me here, and, and I love my position at Black and Brave Wrestling and, and my independent promotion and then my kids and everything. Yeah. Um, but if, if more opportunities were presented, um, and I, you know, fingers crossed, I, I think they will be just uh, due to the feedback I've received from this film. Um, I would love to, you know, take a quick sabbatical or vacation and do a, a week or two in L.A. or New York City once all of this pandemic stuff clears up and yeah. uh, and and kind of dip my toes into that water a little bit more because it's a lot of fun. And and my in-ring wrestling days are pretty much over due to various injuries, most notably my neck injury. Mm. Um, so this is a way to uh, remain a performer and stay in the entertainment industry while being a little bit safer for um, my body and and allowing me to have a, a good quality of life moving forward. So, well, yeah, actually, absolutely. I have a, a question from Twitter, actually, uh, oh, which yeah. I think is very interesting, uh, based on uh, talking about the film. Um, Sky High Rollins, uh, Linda, asked, Linda's how great. is it being I'm acting Linda. in a movie where you have to redo scenes to get the perfect shot? compared to wrestling where you only get one chance. Oh, it's wild. It's so much different. So my fight, I have a, a very uh, physical fight scene in the film, and it's about two minutes on screen, but it took eight hours to shoot that scene because you shoot it once and then they tweak a couple things. You shoot again and they tweak more things. And then you shoot it and it's right, but now they want to get it from this angle. And then they want to zoom in on your face and then they want to zoom in on the other actor's face. And and uh, by the time you've shot it for from every angle possible with this line and then this line, and maybe we'll try out this line, a full day has passed. And you're like, oh, man, this is going to be the longest fight scene in the history of 
of cinema, and then you watch it, it's two minutes long. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow. That's pretty insane. Shot three other fight scenes, and there's actually some black and brave graduates in the film. Um, they were used as fighters. They don't have speaking parts, but their fights are really cool. Um, we shot those three scenes in a matter of three, three and a half hours, and everyone was remarking, oh, my God, I can't believe we did this so quickly. And I'm like, man, you just thought, shot 90 seconds of, of film in the amount of time it would take us to put on a long independent yeah. wrestling event. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just a night, a night and day difference. But uh, wrestling does prepare you, at least for these action scenes, because you know how to make things look as real as possible uh, and, and even more so, you have to make it look even more real when you have that live audience there. And you only get one opportunity at it. Um, but in, in film, uh, you're able to use different camera tricks and whatnot. Uh, yeah. But since you already have the knowledge and, and the ability to make it look real, uh, a lot of the guys, they end up being pretty impressed with you because you got these skill sets that uh, they didn't necessarily focus on day in and day out for a decade plus so uh, yeah. it, was, it was great I don't, I don't think you realize when you're watching a film uh like how much time and effort goes into it because i know i've been guilty of it before i'll watch a fight scene and think oh, that probably took maybe one or two takes you know <laughs> uh, one and done and then you, you you hear some actors doing interviews and they're like yeah that took us two weeks to film yeah <laughs> it's like, <Insane>. wow. <laughs> but I think it's because of watching wrestling that you get into that uh, mindset of, well, this must have just been a one-take thing. Because wrestling is. And you don't really realize how much work goes into these fight scenes in in films. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work. Yeah. Well, the big question, Mark, is are you the next Dwayne Johnson? Are you going to break into Hollywood? (laughs) Oh, man, I I, I would love that. That's some big shoes to fill, and I might have to start eating... uh, What's he got, like 30 pancakes every Sunday or something like that? And yeah, and two yeah. T-bone steaks and everything. I might have to up my uh my protein intake and my carb intake to get to his uh his level, maybe with a couple other uh questionable cocktails, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we won't see which ones those are. But <laughs> yeah, we've got one more question from uh Twitter which I guess is a, an expected question. Sure. Uh, this is from Mrs. May, and she asks, how did he react to Colby and Rebecca's news of their impending parenthood? Well, uh, I got the inside scoop, so I've known for, for a little bit longer than the public has known. Uh, uh, he called me and, and told me about four weeks ago, and man, I was like giddy. I was like laughing on the phone. I was so excited for him. Um, you know, having two kids of my own, I have a four-year-old and a soon-to-be nine-year-old. So mm-hmm. I've been in the dad game for a while. But you just, you don't realize how much it's going to change you as an individual. You don't realize uh, the things it's going to teach you. It teaches you to be more patient and, and more understanding. And yeah. then you just can't put into words uh, the amount of love you can feel for another human being. And it's just an innate love because they haven't done anything to quote unquote earn your love they were just born and and you had a hand in creating them and Mm. uh, it's just it's awesome it's again i'm i'm struggling to find the words because you you just you can't describe the the feeling that you get the first time you see them and then watching them hit milestones as they grow older And, and i look forward to hitting those milestones with with my own kids but i also look forward to watching him uh do that with his uh whether it's a boy or girl son or daughter whatever it may be uh he's in for uh, a big life-changing experience but uh i think he's ready and and that kid's going to be treated like royalty yeah uh, uh whether it's here in the quad cities davenport iowa or or uh when they're on the road in whatever cities they they go to and especially in the online community because i didn't I mean, when you think about it, there's really not, uh, there's never been such a high profile child in the professional wrestling business, at least off the top of my head. You know, he's multi-time 
WWE champion. She's multi-time women's champion on Raw and SmackDown. They're both at the top of their game, two of the most famous and accomplished professional wrestlers in the world. And they made a child together. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on that kid to succeed. In yeah. <laughs> they choose to, uh, you know, go down. And we'll see if it's wrestling or, or, or something else. But uh, I'm, I'm excited for them. I'm really happy for them. And uh, can't wait. Can't wait till the, the kid arrives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, w- watching it last night was quite emotional. Uh, I saw like an hour before I started watching, there was a rumor online, of course, that was like, oh, Becky's going to announce she's pregnant. And I was like, okay, we'll wait and see. And then it happened and she was crying. And I was like, I'm kind of feeling a bit like emotional myself watching this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just hope that they both like have such a good time being parents and uh, Becky seemed genuinely emotional too. Oh, just hope yeah. She can come back one day and they both are just both enjoy parenthood too. It's going to be great from both. Uh, she's a great, yeah, I mean, she's a great person. She's really good for him. And uh, she's around all the time. Uh, she's at the gym all the time. And uh, she, you know, she kind of she sits back a little bit and watches everything. But when she feels the need to chime in, uh, she drops some of the best tidbits of knowledge on on the class. And everyone's excited to have her around. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I like I said, I, I couldn't be happier for the both of them. And, and they are going to be great parents. She's going to be a great mother. He's going to be a great father. It's, it's a really exciting time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hopefully I'm one day. Gonna yeah, I'm going to go and watch it now, but luckily I spoke it for myself this morning, so you're all right. But... Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't realise <laughs> you hadn't seen Roy yet. What's wrong when you've been at work? <laughs> uh, I, I spoke it this morning. I, I made the mistake of going on Twitter for some stupid reason. I forgot. I always try to avoid social media after Raw, SmackDown, or something. And obviously... I couldn't, I couldn't really escape that news, could I? So yeah, I no, I think that news was going to find you wherever you were. That's the talk yeah. of the business right now. Oh, yeah. Before we start wrapping things up, Marek, I just want to say it's been a delight talking to you because, uh, yeah. like I said, I've, you, you were one of the first independent names that I saw. And I ah, think it's okay. cool now, now to be getting the chance to, to talk to you and pick your brain about a lot of things is really cool. And it would be cool to have you on again sometime in the future when wrestling gets back to normal. See what's going on. If you've got any more films coming up or something like that, we'll get you back on and have a chat. But is there anything else you'd like to promote or plug before we wrap things up? Well, like you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mbrave13. Um, you can follow my independent promotion uh, called at SCW Pro, SCW Pro on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, at Black and Brave on Twitter, at Black and Brave Wrestling on Instagram. I can't believe I remember all these. It's been a minute since I've been an interview. Uh, and then if you'd like to apply to become a professional wrestler and, and come to the premier professional wrestling school in the entire world, uh, www.blackandbravewrestling.com. Uh, get your application in soon. Um, we are filling up for 2021. Uh, and if you don't get in those classes, you're going to have to wait a bit until the 2022 sessions are announced so black and brave wrestling.com come live out your dreams it's a good place to be perfect do you have a, a pro wrestling tea store uh we have our own apparel site actually it's ah, black and brave apparel.com we sell our own t-shirts hats sweatshirts we got some uh uh weight belts if you're into the weightlifting. um about to okay i'm going to give you some some uh uh you get the the scoop the first uh, first announcement, we have an autographed poster dropping tomorrow. Um, really nice. It was supposed to be debuted at WrestleCon. Obviously, that was canceled. Um, and our warehouse was actually shut down for a month and a half um, due to guidelines uh, from the state of California. We, our warehouse is in California. Um, we have a Seth Rollins autographed poster, um, full-on 11 by 17 poster, black mat with uh, gold foil, cool design and everything. Autographed by him with a gold Sharpie. Uh, that'll be dropping at blackandbraveapparel.com on uh, Wednesday, May 13th. So I don't know when you guys are putting this out there, but Wednesday, May, May 13th. 13th. Oh, perfect. So come perfect. check it out today. We got a couple couple new designs. We got the autograph poster. We got a new T-shirt that was supposed to debut at WrestleCon. Hopping on there. 
Um, and so that is our um, that is our apparel line uh, outside of the Pro Wrestling Tees Network. I yeah, and I, 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 I've been on the uh, I've been on the website and the merch the merch is absolutely fantastic. To be honest with you, the, the apparel. It, is. Is, uh, um, it doesn't look it, like it, wrestling it, merchandise. It's like streetwear that you can just wear any time. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of our that's kind of our thing. We want to wear we want to make t shirts that we would wear and that you can wear to a concert or you can yeah. wear at the skate park or you know wherever you know what I mean. It doesn't have to be a wrestling show. So mm. yeah. just just shirts we were into when we were younger. We try to try to get designs that imitate those in in some way. No, I like that. But thanks again for cool. joining us, Mark. And Thank you for having me. It was a blast. I'll again at some point soon. And uh, we've been Ringsiders. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.